Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. Book One, Midnight Gardener. Chapter One, The Nuclear Family, His Talk, Her Tea. When your mama was the geek, my dreamlets, Papa would say, she made the nipping off of noggins such a crystal mystery that the hens themselves yearned toward her, waltzing around her, hypnotized with longing. Spread your lips, sweet Lil, they'd cluck, and show us your choppers. This same crystal Lil, our star-haired mama, sitting snug on the built-in sofa, that was Artie's bed at night, would chuckle at the sewing in her lap and shake her head. Don't piffle to the children, Al. Those hens ran like whiteheads. Night on the road this would be, between shows and towns and some campground or pull off with the other vans and trucks and trailers of Benuski's Carnival Fabulon ranged up around us, safe in our portable village. After supper, sitting with full bellies in the lamp glow, we Benuskis were supposed to read and study. But if it rained, the story mood would sneak up on Papa. The hiss and tick on the metal of our big living van distracted him from his papers. Rain on a show night was catastrophe. Rain on the road meant talk, which for Papa was pure pleasure. It's a shame and a pity, Lil, he'd say, that these offspring of yours should only know the slumming summer geeks from Yale. Princeton, dear, Mama would correct him mildly. Randall will be a sophomore this fall. I believe he's our first Princeton boy. We children would sense our story slipping away to trivia. Artie would nudge me and I'd pipe up with, tell about the time when Mama was the geek. And Artie and Ellie and Iffy and Chick would all slide into line with me on the floor between Papa's chair and Mama. Mama would pretend to be fascinated by her sewing and Papa would tweak his swooping mustache and vibrate his tangled eyebrows, pretending reluctance. Well, he'd begin, it was a long time ago. Before we were born. Before, he'd proclaim, waving an arm in his grandest ringmaster style, before I even dreamed you, my dreamlets. I was still hilly and hinchcliffe in those days, mused Mama, and when your father spoke to me, which was seldom and reluctantly, he called me Miss. <laughs> Miss, we would giggle. Papa would whisper to us loudly, as though Mama couldn't hear. Terrified, I was so smitten, I'd stutter when I tried to talk to her. M -m 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 Miss, I'd say. We giggle helplessly at the idea of Papa, the great talker, so flummoxed. I, of course, addressed your father as Mr. Benuski. There I was, said Papa hosing the old chicken blood and feathers out of the geek pit on the morning of July 3rd and congratulating myself for having good geek posters, telling myself I was going to sell tickets by the bail because the weekend of the 4th is the hottest time for geeks and I had a fine brawny geek that year. Enthusiastic about the work he was. So I'm hosing away, feeling very comfortable and proud of myself, when up trips your mama, 
looking like angel food, and tells me my geek has done a flit in the night, folded his rags, as you might say, and hailed a taxi for the airport. He leaves a note claiming his pop is very sick, and he, the geek, must retire from the pit and take his fangs home to Philadelphia to run the family bank. Brokerage, dear, corrects Mama. And with your mama, Miss Hinchcliffe, standing there like three scoops of vanilla, I can't even cuss. What am I gonna do? The geek posters are all over town. It was during the war, darlings, explains mama. I forget which one precisely. Your father had difficulty getting help at that time, or he never would have hired me, even to make costumes as inexperienced as I was. So I'm standing there fuddled from breathing Miss Hinchcliffe's midnight marzipan perfume and cross-eyed with figuring. I couldn't climb into the pit myself because I was doing 20 jobs already. I couldn't ask Horse the Cat Man because he was a vegetarian to begin with and his dentures would disintegrate the first time he hit a chicken neck anyhow. Suddenly, your mama pops up for all the world like she was offering me sherry and biscuits. I'll do it, Mr. Benewski, she says, and I just about sent a present to my laundry man. Mama smiled sweetly into her sewing and nodded. I was anxious to prove myself useful to the show. I had been with Benewski's Fabulon only two weeks at that time, and I felt very keenly that I was on trial. So I says, interrupts Papa, but miss, what about your teeth? Meaning she might break them or chip them, and she smiles wide, just like she's smiling now, and says, they're sharp enough, I think. We looked at Mama, and her teeth were white and straight, but of course, by that time, they were all false. I looked at her delicate little jaw and I just groaned. No, I says, I can't, I couldn't ask you to. But it did flash into my mind that a blonde and lovely geek with legs, I mean, your mama, has what we refer to in the trade as legs, would do the business no real harm. I never thought or heard of a girl geek before, and the poster possibilities were glorious. Then I thought again, no, she couldn't. What your papa didn't know was that I'd watched the geek several times, and of course, I'd often help Minna, our cook at home, when she slaughtered a fowl for the table. I had him. He had no choice but to give me a try. Oh, but I was scared spitless when her first show came up at that afternoon. Scared she'd be disgusted and go home to Boston. Scared she'd flub the deal and have the crowd screaming for their money back. Scared she'd get hurt. A chicken could scratch her or peck an eye out quick as a blink. I was quite nervous myself, nodded Mama. The crowd was good. A hot Saturday, that was. And the 4th of July was the Sunday. I was running like a geek bird that whole day myself and just had time to duck behind the pit for one second before I stood up front to lead in the mugs. There she was, like a butterfly. I wore tatters, really. White, because it shows the blood so well, even in the dark of the pit. Oh, but such artful tatters, such low-necked, slit to the thigh, silky tatters. So I took a deep breath and went out to talk them in. And in they went. A lot of soldiers in the crowd. I was still selling tickets when the cheers and whistles inside started in the whooping and stomping on those old wood bleachers drew even more people. I finally grabbed a popcorn kid to sell tickets and went inside to see for myself. 
Papa grinned at Mama and twiddled his mustache. <laughs> I'll never forget, he chuckled. I couldn't growl, you see, or snarl convincingly, so I sang, explained Mama. Happy little German songs in a high, thin voice. Franz Schubert, my dears. She fluttered around like a dainty bird, and when she caught those ugly squawking hens, you couldn't believe she actually could do anything. When she went right ahead and geeked them, that whole larruping crowd went bonzo wild. There never was such a snap and twist of the wrist, such a vampire flick of the jaws over a neck or such a champ champagne approach to the blood. She'd shake her star white hair and the bitten off chicken head would skew off into the corner while she dug her rosy little fingernails in and lifted the flapping, jittering carcass like a golden goblet and sit, absolutely sit at the wriggling guts she was magnificent, a princess, a Cleopatra, an elfin queen. That was your mama in the geek pit. People swarmed her act. We built more bleachers. Stop. Moved her into the biggest top we had. 1100 capacity and it was always jammed. It was fun, Lil nodded. But I felt that it wasn't my true métier. Yeah, Papa would half frown, looking down at his hands, quieted suddenly. Feeling the story mood evaporate, one of us children would coax. What made you quit, Mama? She would sigh and look up from under her spun glass eyebrows at Papa and then turn to where we huddled on the floor in a heap and say softly, I had always dreamed of flying. The Antifermus, the Italian trapeze clan, joined the show in Abilene and I begged them to teach me. Then, she wasn't talking to us anymore, but to Papa. And Al, you know, you would never have got up the nerve to ask for my hand if I hadn't fallen and gotten so bunged up. Where would we be now if I hadn't? Papa nodded. Yes, yes, and I made you walk again just fine, didn't I? But his face went flat and smileless and his eyes went to the poster on the sliding door to their bedroom. It was old, silvered paper, expensive, with a lone, lush figure of Mama in spangles and smile, high-stepping, with arms thrown up so her fingers in red elbow-length gloves touched the starry letters arching crystal lil above her.